Hi again, I'd like to continue with the uh, to-do tutorial. And in the last video, we added a, um, a check mark here in the uh, table view did select row at index path method, right? And so, you know, our table view shows or it hides. Um, the thing with that last one is that, you know, when we, when we load up the table view, the default state for the check mark is going to be you know hidden right and um, and that actually works because you know this program as it is just generates the to do items you know random you know kind of just like off the cuff right right when it loads okay so so these are all generated new each time but later what I want to do is I want to have the program save the to do items okay and so if it saves the to do items they might be in a in a in a completed state when they load and our program's not going to recognize that so far but if you tap on them then it'll get the state correct so what we need to do is when the when the cells are loaded the first time they need to um, display the check mark or hide the check mark in our case the, the check marks always going to be hidden for now but later in the future they'll it'll it'll make a difference so um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the uh, the cell for row at index path method, and this is where table view cells are created. So every time uh, the table view needs a cell, it calls on cell for row at index path, and then passes the index path to this method, and then this method is responsible for creating the cell, configuring the cell, um, and then returning the cell. In our case, we create the cell with the first line. We set some colors here that we're going to use to style the cell, and then we configure the cell with the colors, and then we configure the text of the cell. And why don't we do this? Let's put another um, another little line here before return, okay? And we'll say if um, to do dot completed, right? So that means if the completed state or you know for or a value for the uh, property for the uh, to do item is true then we're going to do something else we're going to do something else so this is actually just like what we had down here as a matter of fact you could just pretty much copy and paste this right and maybe I'll even do that um, there we go right so it's going to be you know if to do is completed um, Maybe you can't exactly copy and paste that. Let me check this here. Let me do that again. Maybe, uh, actually, you know, for some reason down here, the cell has the optional because we're using table view cell for row at index path, and that returns an optional. Um, up here, we've created the cell, and it's not an optional. So if I copy and paste this, I got to get rid of the question mark there, right? Because here we have a table view cell. That's actually an interesting point. You know, here we have a table view cell that is created so we know we definitely have that and this method you know dq cell with reusable um, cell or dq reusable cell with identifier this returns a cell and we know that it's going to return a cell so this method re definitely returns a ui table view cell down here um, cell for row at index path might return a cell or it might not right why is that well if the index path indicates a, a table view cell that's out of range or a cell that doesn't exist, so if this index path is incorrect and doesn't come up with a cell, then this is going to return uh, you know, a nil. So what it does is it returns an optional, so it might be a table view cell or it might be something else, right? It might be nil. So that's why here we unwrap it. We say like, okay, well, you know, let's put the question mark here. And if that is a table view cell, then we can set its accessory property. And if it's not a table view cell, then we'll ignore it, right? So up here, though, we know we have a table view cell, so um, no need to do the optional thing. This actually, the, the thing about this last little bit here is we need to have this for the future. In this example here, um, it's going to have no effect, right? So, you know, the default state for all these is, is check mark false, right? So, um, so that's not going to do anything. If you wanted to test this, you could go into to do item Swift. And you could set the default property for each to do the completed state to true, and then um, it should display the check mark here, right? Okay, so that's a test for you. So we know that's going to work now. I'm going to set that back to false because I think the to do item should be 
off by false, right? Or um, off by default. So um, so anyway, so we've got that figured out. So let's do one more thing. You know, the uh, the cell color for the check mark is not quite right. Um, so it, you know, it's blue. Why don't we set the tint color? So we'll do that as a last step. So when I look at the app delegate here, and I have um, some properties for my UI table view cell here. Let's add one more property. Let's say UI table view cell dot appearance, and then we'll say tint color equals, and maybe I'll use this color number four here, which is the red color. And then we'll test our, um, our app. And then there we got a red check mark, right? And it matches the, the red up here. Okay, so there's a there's an example there of using kind of cleaning up and adding some more features to our um, our app. Okay, thanks for watching.